Hello, kitty. In the last video, we talked about how to tell a story for comic books, or how I have been doing it, through spoken words, then transcribing into prose that uses visual language. This method gives me a written story that could stand alone without need for illustrations. I know, that kind of sounds like I just wrote myself out of a job as an illustrator. But no, on the contrary, it helps me visualize the panels a little more clearly. To some degree, it actually helps me skip the thumbnailing stage. It also makes it possible for me to send my first story draft to a few close friends for some initial feedback before I even start the work on character design. I don't know if this is a thing that comic book writers do or if they reserve this stage to the very last, when everything is done or almost done and illustrated. I find it essential to get this feedback from a selection of close friends at an early stage for two reasons. One, I'm really excited at this stage. This is the most exciting stage for me. The moment when I have completed a new story, it reminds me of that feeling when you're a kid and you've just been granted a pass to step out of the house and ride your bicycle around the neighborhood on your own. The anticipation of the ride, the journey, the adventure of the whole creation process before me gives me a dopamine rush. And the second reason for this early feedback is to get a better sense of direction. The whole time I've been composing this story, I have been inside a bubble. Writing alone, thinking on my own, that's a bubble. I need that bubble to burst as soon as possible so that I can minimize pitfalls where I didn't see them. And now is the best time to do it. Yes, before you even take your bicycle out of the gate. It sounds like a bad idea if you're already brimming with excitement to get the momentum going. But this is what I've learned. It's easier to see blind spots and improve on things when I still haven't used up a lot of my time and energy. Getting that feedback now is more useful than getting it after I've poured a lot of effort in creating the comic book. By that time, the journey is over. I'd be so content already and wouldn't be so receptive because my mind would be focused on other things. I have to make the most of that initial excitement and channel that dopamine rush towards an action that is better grounded. Now, I have to make an important distinction between getting early feedback on a story versus an idea. Getting that seed of an idea for a story before you even write the story can be just as exciting as completing a written story. It's very tempting to call a friend and tell them about this magnificent idea, which is basically an expression of intention. I notice that when I do that, I always never end up planting it. I lose the interest in writing about it. It's as if the act of expressing intention, of verbalizing my plans, satiates the need to actually do it. It's quite funny and tragic. Conversely, when I don't indulge in bouncing off the idea to someone else, I am better suited to pursue it and produce a new story out of it. I know this now because when I look at those stories that I have written and completed into a comic book, I never share the idea behind it. But to those ideas I had shared, they never saw the light of day. The story needs to be exposed as soon as I finish writing it. But the idea should be kept in a bubble until the story is formed. Alright, this video is longer than I had intended. I promise I'll try to keep it shorter next time. Please enjoy the rest of the weekend. I'll talk to you later.